Okay, I'm going to start the presentation because we're at time and we don't have um, too much extra time and I'm hoping we're going to find a bit of time for sharing. Um, I'm, I'm Lisbeth Baudry. I'm a teacher librarian in a single track French immersion school. I want to start by recognizing um, that I live and work and play on the unceded territory of the Tate Tene. And one of my goals to help um, reconciliation is to work on continuing to translate um, some of the local Clayton Today stories to French, which I have done some already. I chose this topic for the um, um, presentation this year because um, I was inspired last year by Rebecca Rubio and I conducted an audit, a diversity audit of my English resources because I knew in French I didn't have very many. and. Um, I looked at cultural diversity and I compared my stats to um, the Stats Canada information on Canadian diversity. I looked at the main character and the author, and I think really trying to look at um, authentic voices. Because um, now we're talking less about own voices and more authentic voices. And I looked also at SOGI. Um, but I didn't look at other kinds of diversity uh, like poverty or family type because we have the kind of diversity also in my school. Then I had a grant to um, purchase books. And so my idea of this um, presentation is to share some of the resources I found and hopefully we can have a little bit of time if you have some resources you have that you can share because for sure I have not found everything that's out there. And um, one of the comments I just wanted to make before I get started is the importance of um, avoiding the pitfalls in diversity, which are showing only suffering, showing only surface level diversity, ignoring inter intersectionality, so diversity in several things like culture and poverty or culture and soji, um, the sidekick syndrome where the it's not the main character. So I had looked at main characters in my survey, um, treating groups as monolith and I'm um, just stopping at text and looking at images as well. So um, in recognition of, um, let's see if I can get this to work here. How do I change my slide? Hmm. Okay, here we go. So in recognition of um, the first nat, nat Journée Nationale de Vérité et Réconciliation, I decided to start with Aboriginal stories. And I'm talking a bit about where you find them um, and what I found that has actually got the, the intersectionality of written in French initially and also um, uh, be, being a French First Nations author. So some of the places you can look are La Librairie Hananorak. Um, it's a quite a small publishing house. And that picture of Hannah Norak and Les Rêves by Jean Tsu, that she's a Wendat or a, what historically we call Huron. Um, and uh, her books are published actually from that live, uh, bookstore publishing house. Um, locally, we have Strong Nations, which has an amazing collection of books that are translated, but also some uh, French, French Aboriginal authors and Good Minds out of Ontario. And so these are some images that I have of um, authentic voices. So Jean Siu, which I talked about, who's when that. I also have um, uh, uh, Michelle Noel books. He has a whole series of books. This is La Papin Chinois. So that's kind of like a grade three mini chapter book. I really love Sylvain Rivard, who started as an artist and is writing books. And he has this series of clothing items. You have to be careful. A lot of them are really good for early primary, but he has one on murdering missing women. Um, it's called the Poupée, and it looks like it's in the same series, but it's more like a grade seven school book. Um, a new one that I haven't read that I'm waiting, I've ordered is Isabelle Picard, um, Niche, and I think there's a second one in this one as well. And um, another book that I quite enjoy is Mingan, which is a collection of Inuit stories. And I've used that quite often um, when we talk about poetry because they're poetic. Um, and the three pictures of albums on the kind of right bottom corner are actually um, 
they, we put them in authentic voices or I kind of put them in authentic voices because they're people that have either worked a long time in an um, Aboriginal community or used um, had their work reviewed by elders. So one of them is Etienne Poiré's book, Niska, which is probably like my grade seven teacher this year told me, oh no, uh, that would be great, better in kind of eight, but that's kind of the level I see that book. Swifton, I haven't read yet. Um, and Josie Laflamme, um, married to an Inuit uh, person of Inuit heritage. And um, La Ronde des Saisons is written by a lady that lived a long time in uh, the North. Um, one other thing that um, I worked on a while ago with my um, Aboriginal education worker at the time, Amber Desjardins, is we worked looked at books that were out at that time that worked with um, the learning outcomes. Like if you go to that website and you scroll down to the bottom or maybe part way down, you can see this resource, the kindergarten page of um, what we had. It was a team project and I never completed the English book. Oh, someone says, I love Nish. It is great. So that's great. Um, and I think she has a second one. Okay. Um, okay. So the next slide shows because this finding authors that are actually Aboriginal and French speaking first. So the French language is good, is really difficult. So instead, I've also added this slide of books that I find that when they're translated are actually a really good level for French immersion. So you're not sitting there reading them and actually paraphrasing them, but you can actually read the text. So I love Monon et Tanea, so Sherman Alexie's book. The kids love that one. Um, Monique Gray Smith, some of her books are difficult, but this one here, New Somme Gentil, I just recently got. I've shared it already. Uh, everyone loves it. It's quite a good level. Mitch. Um, La Chandai Orange de Phyllis is more intermediate, like Chinchieco and Chichis, Le Canot de Chichi, but those are um, both authors that we use, I use quite frequently. A little harsher presentation of the history is Je ne suis pas numéro. Um, I ha also have Nana Bocho and Les Papillons. Um, which is a good story. And I really love the level of les mots volés. And I like the fact that the pictures and the text can be read at a wide range of grades. And it's got a lot of um, inference in that book. And so if you're reading it with grade three, you can just read the text. But if you're up with the intermediate, that's the one I read last year for National uh, Aboriginal Day, you can get the students making the inferences about why the grandfather is happy that the girl air flowing in the wind, right? There's a lots of um, information in there, but at different levels. Um, I recently bought, um, sorry, I'm kind of jumping around here, David Robinson's um, series, um, Le Chef, and um, I, the students quite like those. Um, someone else mentioned in the chat, David Bouchard, and he is French, and he does write, but I find his books... Um, they're really difficult, but the, the, um, they're really difficult and it's really a series of books that I paraphrase. So it's definitely worth looking into them. They're definitely books that are, have the two things I'm looking for, a French author that is um, writing in French with the Inuit, with the Aboriginal heritage. So really good representation, but I find that in English they're better, um, well, in English, you can read them because the kids have a bigger vocabulary. But for French immersion, they would be, um, you know, grade seven, six, seven, eight, nine, definitely higher middle school ages. And then I just put in the picture of sometimes I feel like a fox because I bought it before it got translated. And you can see my translation is glued in there. And I seem to be doing that a little bit more frequently, just meet that need. And that's my kind of my goal locally is to take the um, plate me to texts that I have and, and make them available to my teachers. A lot of them are level. Um, on the bottom are collections that are really good that are translated and even leveled readers. So the Histoire Forte, which is the first picture, Mama, comment fait du poisson fumé? I think they have a, a A and B now for Histoire Forte, and I got them in my shopping cart, the next set. Um, use them a lot with different you know, right in the social 
the Sciences Humaine, the social studies curriculum, um, for reading right from um, uh, Lecture Fort. They have two series of that as well. And we have those as guided reading kits even. And it's really nice because the teacher can just bring them into the class, have an authentic voice or a friend of an authentic voice. So it's checked. And, and it just gets inserted into, you know, something that you do, but they're just part of the diversity. Um, I like the collection um, of medicine wheel productions. Um, they're also translated, but the level is really good. I bought some Turtle Island voices, mostly more around subject areas because they're quite a bit more expensive than the Strong Nation ones, um, but also very nice stories. And then the little um, Spirit Bear productions, um, Lapin de Adros. I see someone in the chat. This is great that um, David Bouchard, I'm going to even write this down as well. She's got On a Pan du Soleil. Um, we're adding to the sun that she said is a much better level. And uh, so I'm going to have to look at that. The other one that I've seen is um, translated is, and I haven't purchased it yet. It's in my card is um, Thompson Highway has taken some of his songs. So I, I don't know the level of that. That's another one that we, um, um, you might want to look. So before I move on to another cultural group, does anyone else want to add anything in the chat? Um, or other other books that they've used that are French immersion that we might find interesting to share. Anyways, type away in there, please. Um, okay, so the next um, area that I looked at um, because I recently got a Le Relu, um, a Le Relu book about and in Le Relu, which is a review of Quebec children's literature, they had a whole section on. Um, Haitian authors. Um, so we, and because Haitia was um, colonized by French speaking people, that's usually their second language. So the, and then they've moved to Quebec. So we have um, several Quebec authors that write in French with Haitian heritage, like Danny, Danny Laferriere. And um, that's his book. That's one of his series there, just We Food of Ava. And the pictures are amazing. You really get that Haitian feeling of the countryside and the people. Um, they're a little bit hard, so more kind of grade two, three. So that's a challenge with picture books. Um, oh, someone's written, thank you. The Chandai Orange, we'll back up Aboriginal comes in a lower group. Um, also from Haiti, but I think only one or two books is um, Marie Céline Agnan, and that's the Orange Magic. Same thing, a little bit high, but um, appropriate. Um, um, Nadia Holm is actually Carib Caribbean, not Haitian, and I find her books are a little high, so I'm hoping as the newer ones come out, it comes um, a little bit easier. Um, with Haitian heritage and books that are translated is this La Magie de Mama, so Edwidge Dattecat is lives in the States, but her books are getting translated, and they're lovely images for people that have that kind of a cultural background. Um, so there's a couple of other authors on that list, and I had posted a um, kind of a summary of this, so I'll make sure that gets out. Okay. Um, so this is the area of the Caribbean, just because it has a real connection with Quebec, it's kind of why I've chosen that as an area that I wanted to share. So if anyone has another title in the books from the Caribbean that they'd like to share, throw it in that chat as well. I'm looking, I also looked at books about Africa. Well, kind of is a really general blob, unfortunately, because we do know there's many countries there. Um, Dabika Chetty actually introduced me to um, uh, Margaret Abu's series at Kissy, and it, my students love it. And I had a couple of girls that had recently come from Africa, not from the country that um, Marguerite Abu comes from, who now lives in France, but just really love seeing themselves in the literature and it really it really showed me how having the diversity was so important. Those books went from the grade five sister to the grade three sister to the kindergarten sister. And um, they love seeing their family. They were recently. Um, Africa Bill is translated. I recently bought Le Grain de Sable. That's more of a high school level. That it's a 
about the first slave. So um, in Canada, and it's really pieced together. It's a piece of poetry and it's pieced together from a little bit of historical fact they could find. Um, and I would say more like grade seven, eight, nine for that one. Um, uh, Comme un million de Tarpignan Noir is a translated one. So, so I have a few authors there. Um, Frank Sylvester uh, Webster, who is actually, that's his alias for Alia, and I can't say that. Um, Edith Kabuya. And then from France, there's three authors there. Then I looked at African Canadians. So I have a couple of names there of African Canadians that are writers that get translated to French. And then my last kind of collection of books here are authors with African heritage. The... And so I just received comme un million de papillons noir. And unfortunately, I would say the, it's too high. It's actually too high in French for the level that it's intended at because it's kind of, it's really a book that would be read at home by a parent, which doesn't happen with French. Put it up there as an example, but I don't think it's the best example. Um, my intermediate kids really like Sur Jumelé, which is translated from an American writer. And, um, we also can look at nonfiction. It's not like we should be just looking at fiction, so I put nonfiction. So some of the places I got ideas from are the Afro Leave Quebec. So that's a really good um, link. And there's a, a black woman that's a librarian teacher on, that has lots of suggestions and book reviews on the website. Mr. Akpak. So that's another site to go look at. Okay. So kind of a just really realizing that it's really limited and it's really challenging to find books that fit in here other than translations, right? The other area I looked at was books from Asia. So once again, a huge collection of books together. And I didn't find anything that was initially written in French. Um, so these are all translations. And I found a really neat little video at Ecole de Loisirs. There's one of the publishers there just loves Japanese stories. And he really feels that not only diversity in culture, because the people in the books are different or the animals are the same, but that they how they write stories are different. And he said that Japanese picture book authors use, are much more focused on observation and there's less for, um, focus on the, like the psychology of the characters. And he said, it's really about the detail, the infinitely fine detail. And I don't know if you remember, Anna was like that, it's one of the ones. So uh, quite a few of these I have in my library. Um, La, Petite, La Petite Boite is just beautiful, kindergarten grade one. and has the animals. Um, so, so um, and then Tomoko Omarua Felecu is kind of a fun lineup one, right? Make a line, right? Um, and just the animals again. Uh, Yukishia Kaseno is the, the petite what? I have two or three other ones by that author. Very good. Michiko Namura, no, I'm not sure. I don't think. I haven't got this yet. It's on order. This da da da. I think it's going to be a very kindergarten book. It's about first sounds. That would be interesting. Um, I've got an image here from Tero Gomi, and of course, if you don't have it already, most people have the Science Naturelle de Tatsu Nagata, and they're just amazingly kind of grade um, two, three books, and he. It's that same way, like Savvy Two Kane Two, where he has a game with the pictures and the words, and a kind of nonfiction where author challenged the person reading the words to realize not the same. So the elephant with the trunk would actually have a suitcase with him of things, and it really makes kids sort of look at that. Um, lots of manga that's translated. I, I'm just getting into anime and manga, so. Um, uh, definitely chi. We have lots of chi. Where I'm just starting to get a little bit of Naruto and One Piece and um, um, look at anime. I think that's a huge, as we heard from our you know, speaker, that having that graphic novel group or the anime group is a really big thing in a library. And it's the same for kids that are having to read in French. And that support and the scaffolding of having the images with the words is really good. I also encourage kids to read the book in English if you have it in English and then read it in French. And so the same with uh, uh, Van Disney, the graphic novels, that's a good. 
Um, so for Japan, I would um, there's a w French website of someone devoted uh, to all ages of literature, but the Journal de Japan. So there's a link there. And a nonfiction book that's a collection of translated haikus, um, always used in my poetry session. Okay. Uh, after that, I looked at um, Korean authors, and I have, guys, I have quite a few Korean authors that are also translated in France. Um, La Vague is a pictureless book, so I use that with my kindergarten students to teach them to read pictures. Parapluie is actually about poverty, but also, um, no, that one's about friendship. I have the Parapluie Jaune, which is about poverty. Um, so different um, authors are listed there. Um, and also, um, there's a couple of Korean writers that write great nonfiction books about different kinds of animals. And so like the Chaucery is a series from Mango Jeunesse that is originally is a Korean author. Um, for India, I've just started looking. I'm realizing more and more I have, I have to look more at from India. So I've just purchased this O Croc O. This author has several books that are translated to French. Um, so I'm hoping when it comes, I'll be able to see the level. I'm just putting up there as an example. I haven't actually been able to see inside. The challenge of being a French immersion librarian, right, is you can't see in the books. Um, I have a couple of other books that are kind of fun that fit under Chinese, say Mon Imagère Chinois, so just a little picture book. And I have two or three in the series Learning Chinese Painting. Um, so um, there's a couple of authors there. Um, site, so a site, if you're looking for diversity, that I find was really helpful for finding different, especially Asian authors, was to go to Ricochet Jeune, which is a Swiss site um, that um, reviews children's literature. So you get a good review on it, and you can actually search by nationality there. So that's kind of a really good resource to identify books, and then to read the review to see, do you think that would fit in your collection, or is it going to be too difficult for French immersion? Um, so really, a, you know, a helpful site for this. Okay. Um, so, um, so culturally, I went really broad and I didn't really include European because I feel that we all have a lot of French from France books or maybe not a lot because the French is harder. Um, but I didn't really include a lot of books in that category. The other category that we talked about that I wanted to talk about that I did some research on was some um, Sochi books. Um, and so I know for sure that the Quebecois author Sophie Labbé um, identifies as a trans person and as writing. And so the collection CL actually has two books now, definitely um, more grade seven, eight, nine. Um, but it's actually super exciting that it's a, such an authentic voice, right? I think some of these other books are also authentic. I kind of have the feeling Il Saint is. It's a very quiet um book, uh, let me flip to my page, um, that it's about two men that live together. Andre Poulet has written a book, so more of a friend of Soji people. Um, Ulysse and Alice has been out quite for quite a while. It's about the two mums. Philomene Maem is from France, so that's a French author. It's about a little girl that all the boys fall in love with her. He would really like to be a, fall in love with her friend that's a girl which you would prefer. Dupu is kind of just gender expansive. Elise Gravel is very um, supportive of Soji. Um, other authors from France are Alice Briere Haquette, so the princess who doesn't, doesn't like princes. Beatrice Boutignon has written Tango à deux papa, and I know there's an English and American written version of the same story. That's very useful. Also from France, Marie de Rose, um, gender expansive. Um, Someone's added the link to Scholastic, Le Prince et les Chevaliers, right? So that's another good one. Um, is that, so just make a comment if you uh, grade level for that one, right? The other ones that I like that are actually translations from Polish and they're more about gender expansive than really Soji are the Declaration des Droits des Filles. There's one for Fille, Garçon, Mama et Papa. Um, and it's really about how you can be everything under that and you don't really so just very gender expansive um quite an easy level but it'll end up in mine's being put in my intermediate i i don't do my cataloging i'm really lucky i have a dlc comments that does 
Um, so there's a couple of links there. One is to um, uh, the, the Bookstore Association in Quebec has a list of homosexuality in books that are appropriate for school. So there's some listed there, more than what I have here. And the other place that I like to get um, um, reviews on books and ideas about books is uh, the Bibliothèque de Montréal. And they have a section called De Point. And uh, there's a couple there that fit under the idea. Category 26, I think, is sexual diversity. But they also have another one on gender expansive. So book lists that they think are like the best. They're full star. Um, and they uh, pay for really good reviews. And so I find the reviews on their site are pretty good. Um, so once again, this is a category that the, there are more and more books now also being translated from English into French. But I was trying to focus once again on that combination, the intersexuality of the French author um, with the... Okay. Um, uh, thank you, Miriam. There's another suggestion there. Uh, something for Papi, the link on, on the site there. So definitely check into that one as well. Um, so I just want to say thank you for listening and a little bit of sharing we have. I don't know if anyone wants to um, type in a question. Um, I'm hoping that sort of gives you an idea of kind of where I'm going with that, um, the diversity in my collection, and maybe where you can look for some ideas for you. And feel free to send me an email. Um, also on my school website where I shared um, the link for the Aboriginal books, I have book lists that I have in my library of. Soji books, both in English and French, with the whole range. I have a list of Aboriginal books, and I'm starting to dig deeper into them to see if they're an authentic voice or not. So you'll see some comments in there, because I have bought quite a few books from um, Good Minds, and I'm finding that I don't have enough information about the author to know if they're really, how approved the stories have been by um, elders. So there's a whole series of L'Album de Crépusule, and I'm just not sure when you look at the author who's a Quebecois and the name is very, you can't tell um, if they're actually good. Oh, someone else has added one. I recently purposed Bibliobus. So that's a more of an Asian um, one. So, and you, when you put a book in, if you think about the level, sometimes you don't, get to, you don't see it. But I find with French Immersion, that's the real challenge is actually having that book that's open. So we just have a couple more minutes here before our time is up. And I'm hoping you enjoyed uh, the presentation. And definitely feel free to reach out to me. I'm really passionate being in a single track school about how to support my French Immersion. Uh, hello. Always hello. Yeah, go ahead. May, may I please ask you a question? Sure. Um, you have presented uh, on the resources for elementary school. I'm just wondering if you have uh, some uh, resources for secondary schools. I, I work in an elementary school. I, so some of my books like CL, I would say would be good. Like a Soji book would be good for secondary. I think but I don't know how high up. Um, it depends also on the strength of your um it depends also on the strength of your readers. Um, another one is that book, that, that book, uh, Niska, the Aboriginal story. Um, I, I'm kind of wondering, I'm thinking Nish. I don't know the lady that's already read it. Maybe they can make a comment. I'm thinking um, we're looking at that potentially as a that Aboriginal book, potentially as a book for grade seven. So to me, that would be kind of that eight, nine range. Um, I, I'm sorry, that's not really where I shop. I don't shop for that grade level. So if I buy a few that are the wrong grade level, I shoot them off. Um, the the, um, the Grand de Sable is, I would definitely put as a high school book. Uh, I think I kind of overbought with that one. Um, I think when you're looking at translated books, um, there might be some lists on those websites I shared. So I would go to Ricochet and see what's there. Um, oh, someone wrote Nish is good. Thank you very much. Nish is very good for middle school. So that, for me, middle school is seven, eight, nine. Um, so, but go oh, look at, I would look at Ricochet. The other place I use a lot to find books is I go to the Bibliothèque de Montréal, the catalog de Nelligan, um, and they have a rating system on all their reviews. And if it's a four or a five, a five is a must buy for them. 
just read through the text and just see what the don't tell you if it's wordy or if it's um, very good with language, then you know it's going to be too challenging for French immersion, right? Like if the language is very flowery and, you know, then you're like, okay, yeah, my students can't do flowery. They have to do pretty plain. Um, so I'll kind of read through that and I uh, get that. Anyways. So, sorry. Um, so the say a ricochet jeune, uh, that can be applicable to high school, secondary? Yeah. And it's out of Switzerland. And, oh, okay. and the Bibliothèque de Montréal, um, they also, they, they have the whole age range. So definitely go look there um, and then choose the four or five. So it's called Catalog Nelligan. Is a Bibliothèque de Montréal. Um, and uh, shoot me an email. I'm, my email's on the screen there. I'll put it in the chat too. Thank you I very think. much. Yeah. Okay. Hey. Okay, so uh, I'm going to say goodbye to everyone and I'm ending the meeting and um, hopefully I'll see you at one of the vendor booths or somewhere else. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.